Hi, welcome to Scott Plays and another topic of the week. Last week's topic was on solo gaming. I asked, are you a solo gamer? If you are, why do you solo game? Do you look for a solo mode when researching or buying games? If so, what features of a solo mode do you look for? And should a solo mode play or feel the same as the multiplayer? So I got a, a few responses to this one. Um, Jeff said, 99% solo gamer. I can play what I want, when I want, for as long or short a period of time as I want. Never, never a scheduling problem or waiting for someone else. I only buy games that I think will play well solo. Don't care at all how the solo play compares to multiplayer. I can socialise in many different ways. Gaming is me time. And Rich said, I try, but I prefer gaming for the social aspect. Um, Ronald said, I only buy games that have a solid solo play experience. Automata or stat cards are fine with me. Apps for games like FFG make uh, makes it a, a better experience in my book, but I do play almost as much solo as I do multiplayer. And finally, Kyle said, I prefer solo games as I can pick it up and play it at any time, but even multiplayer games are really fun. If a game has both, especially if the multiplayer one is super competitive and easy to learn, it's even better. While there are some games that require other people, uh, such as most card and board games, uh, multiplayers that don't require me to be near or with others, uh, sorry, online multiplayer games that don't require me to be near or with others, especially competitive ones, are some of my favourite to practice over and over and get really good at. The motivation of a leaderboard, whether it's between friends or around the world, is huge for me. I love tournaments and the such as well. So to answer your question more concisely, I am a solo gamer at heart and a competitive multi-gamer when I can be. So I think Kyle was sort of straying into sort of video games a little there, um, and because he... I didn't actually read it, but he mentioned Pokemon and Call of Duty, um, and uh, yeah, one of the criticisms I see of solo gaming is why would you play a solo board game when you can just pick up a controller and play a video game? And for me. I think that's a lot like asking why would you go to the movies when or no why would you read a book when you can go to the movies <laughs> or watch television um and it, it's they're both valid experiences and both things that i personally enjoy doing but they're very different and you do them for different reasons i mean um so uh yeah, also I, I want to touch on what Rich said about the social aspect. And again, yeah, I think that is that is valid. And, um, but for me, the, the social aspect of playing with other players is just as important and not uh, more valid or more important than solo gaming. Um, and, and they are they're, they're two different ways to enjoy board games that are as equally valid as each other um, so yeah I for example I go to a weekly board gaming club on a Monday um, we normally play sort of three, four, five, six player games. Um, it's a great time. I get to uh, interact with other people on a social level. 
play some great games, have a great time, and that's brilliant. I mean, there's, yeah, really enjoy that. But there are other times when, you know, either I'm not able to make it out to the board game club, um, you know, I'm too tired, I'm uh, not in the mood for seeing other people, um, or I've just been too busy and I've not been able to make the time to do that that's when I'll pick up a, a solo game because you know I want to I want to still have that um, the the part of gaming that exercises your brain the actual gaming part of it I want that but I'm not able to do that within a, a social setting for whatever reason um, and yeah that that for me is where solo gaming fits into my experience of the the gaming hobby um, and you know I used to be a video gamer um, I've had several gaming consoles had quite a good gaming PC at the time done all of that type of gaming and I'm, I'm, I would still do it occasionally if I had either the console or, or the PC to actually do that kind of thing, which I don't anymore. And that's really the only reason I don't do it. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, they're, they're two very different experiences for me. Um, video games are much more visually engaging, um, whereas I personally find board games more um, cognitively stimulating and cognitively engaging um, you know the, the, it's um, yeah going back to the, the the comparison of reading a book or watching a, a film or TV show um, when you're reading a book you've got to engage your imagination um, as well as the the, the actual um, cognitive process of reading the words um, but watching a TV show or a film you can kind of switch all that off and just experience the, the, the visuals and the, the, the sounds and you know that's something you don't get reading a book you don't get sounds but at the same time if it's really well written you hear all that in your head and that's kind of um, yeah, that kind of illustrates the difference for me between board games and video games um, because with a board game I've got to actually engage with the, uh, the game on a different level. I've got to immerse myself in the world and the systems that the board game is creating um, and yeah, okay, I may not, it's, you know, I'm not sort of imagining scenes or anything but it's yeah it's it's a different kind of engagement than playing a video game where it's being fed at me and all I'm doing is it's basically just um, uh, hand-eye coordination twitch stuff where I'm just moving stuff about with my fingers and you know it, it's um, and like the, the story of the game is being fed to me uh, and I'm just kind of reacting to what happens whereas with board gaming you're creating the story you're um, you are taking I, it, I, I don't want to say more of an active part because obviously with video gaming you are taking an active part in revealing the story but it, it's yeah it's it's kind of hard to explain, but it's a very different thing for me. Um, so, to answer my own questions, am I a solo gamer? Yes. <laughs> um, I think I've answered the, the next one, why do I solo game? Because it's a, it's a different experience for me. Um, 
I don't play as much, or I don't do as much solo gaming as I used to. Um, yeah, mainly because I'm able to get out to the board game club now, uh, and yeah, that sort of that fills a lot of my desire to game. Um, there are still times when I will, uh, I you know I'm I'm at home. There's nothing on Netflix I want to watch. Um, I don't really want to listen to any music. I just want to. I want to relax, but I don't want to completely switch off and go to sleep. <laughs> um, I'll grab a, a small solo game, something I can play in 15 minutes and, you know, do that. That kind of is where solo gaming fits in for me. Um, in the past, it was more than that. It was really, I, you know, I was unable to get out to um, a game club, um, you know, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, and then, you know, solo gaming became really important to me. It was as a way of staying engaged in the hobby. Um, and, you know, that possibility to do that is still really important to me. So, um, yeah, I... I wouldn't say that every game that I buy has to have solo in it, um, but if a game has a solo mode, I am much more likely to purchase it. Uh, there are certain things I look for in solo games. Um, I do like the solo and multiplayer experiences to be somewhat similar, but I also like it when they are different. I mean, a good example of that is Glass Road, where essentially in the solo, you're doing the same kinds of things um, as you do in the, the multiplayer, but the actual mechanical way in which the solo works is actually very different to multiplayer. And that I think is really nice because it gives me two different ways to experience the same game. Um, the In terms of what I look for in a solo experience, um, I'm pretty flexible when it comes to solo, actually. I, the, I see a lot of people, the when they talk about the, the, the solo game, types of solo games that they like, um, they'll say things like, um, I don't like solo games where it's just uh, beat your highest score. Um, that doesn't bother me, you know. If if the gameplay is interesting enough, then that's fine for me because, you know, when I'm solo gaming, it's more about engaging the brain, and, um, <laughs> you know, you can you can do that even if you're trying to beat a high score. And I, and I think that's a lot like playing, you know, particularly older video games, you know, or arcade games. You you know the I you know I. I grew up at a point where video games and particularly arcade, well, in fact, yeah, both video computer games and arcade games were solo experiences. I, I remember the first multiplayer arcade games. Um, but before that, you were trying to get your three-letter name on the high score table. That was the aim of playing, and that um, that sense of achievement is what I also look for in some of my solo board gaming. Um, not always. I also like uh, sort of the... Um, Automata or 
um, games like Pandemic where they've got win-loss um, conditions um, so um, if, if a certain thing happens in the game then you lose or if you can do this other thing in the game then you win and there isn't really a score associated with it um, I, I like those as well and they're, they're a different type of uh, challenge um, for me um, let's see what else uh, oh yeah the the socializing aspect and um, that is one of the things I, I often see as a, as, a, as a criticism of solo gaming people are like well why would you solo game because gaming is meant to be social it's, it's not meant to be anything it's it's gaming gaming is gaming um, and yeah I totally understand why some people game for the social aspect of it um, but yeah for me that's just one facet of why I game um, and in fact I wouldn't even say it's the most important facet it's you know the the exploration of games and the systems and um, the, the competition that's um, and challenging myself challenge my challenging um, my cognitive ability and my intellect that's why I game <laughs> you know and yet being able to socialize with people at the same time is is great and it's important and it's valuable but it's not the primary reason I game and I think that maybe is the thing that differentiates the sort of um, solo gaming community from those that are anti solo gaming for the want of a better phrase um, I think that yeah, you have gamers that are very gaming is a social thing and that's why they game and there are people that are very gaming is an intellectual exercise and that's why they game and obviously those are the two extremes and you have lots of people in the middle but yeah I think that's where the divide sometimes comes in um, uh, what else was there something I'm sure there was something else that was mentioned um, oh yeah Jeff talked about scheduling problems and yeah I mean again that was one of the reasons I, I used to game more was just that you know I could game at any time I wanted you know it, it could be you know, uh, two o'clock in the morning and I'm awake and I can't sleep and it's like I, my brain's really active and I, I've got to do something and it's do I veg out in front of Netflix or do I grab a game off the the shelf and actually exercise my brain and you know the, and I would tend to um, well no, I was, I was going to say I would, I would tend to go for the gaming in, in that situation but it, it was probably about 50-50 sometimes I'd game sometimes I'd you know veg in front of Netflix but um, but yeah having solo games available or solo player games or solo playable games available to you gives you that opportunity when that kind of situation arises you can just grab one off the shelf and just play it um, uh, there's one other sort of criticism that I um, have seen and I don't fully understand it so I don't know if I can articulate it that well but it, it's kind of the the idea that solo games are boring or not as engaging as multiplayer games and I, I don't know whether that's because they they're missing the, the social aspect or um, but my feeling is that if you think that you just haven't played the right 
solo games. Um, you know, the, the, for every sort of genre and sub-genre and sub-sub-genre within gaming, so, you know, gateway games, abstract games, high thematic games, big long war games, you know, for all those different types of genres, miniatures games, whatever you want, Euros, Ameritrash, whatever, there is a solo game that fits into that category, if not several. I mean, some of the, the most popular solo games are really short, um, almost um, abstract card games like Friday or Honorim. Uh, but then at the same time, other ones are big, um, really thematic, um, really involving games. Mansions of Madness Second Edition is a good one. Um, and that, that brings up um, Ron's point about uh, the apps for FFG or Automata decks. Um, you know, you can have uh, particularly with apps, you can have really engaging games that do so much. I mean, um, yeah, Mansions of Madness Second Edition is one of the games I have that I don't play it a huge amount solo, um, but I really enjoy it when I do because that app is so engaging and it gets you so into the 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 setting and the um the theme of the game um and so yeah the the i yeah going back to what i was saying about people that as i say they don't like solo games there isn't one thing that is a solo game. <laughs> There's, I think there are solo games or games that are playable solo that would be enjoyed by any gamer. Um, and even, even if you prefer video games, I think I can find a card or board game that you would enjoy playing solo. Um, it may take going through a whole bunch of them to find that but I believe that that's possible I believe that there are solo games out there for everybody and it, it's so um, it's such a wide um, and deep part of the gaming landscape now uh, that you know, I mean, certainly in the past, it was, you know, you, you were basically looking at um, almost solitaire-like card games, and that was, and maybe your um, war games, um, and there wasn't much more than that, but certainly with the... Uh, cooperative game movement that's brought in much more interesting and varied and actually inter yeah, interesting is the wrong word varied uh, solo game options um, and so yeah I, I, I feel like solo gaming sort of gets a uh, ignored by a lot of people um, when in fact they would really enjoy it um, was there anything else I wanted to say I don't think so um, oh yes Kyle mentioned uh, practice and, and he didn't really use it in this 
context, but that made me think about or well, one one of the other ways that or one of the other reasons that a lot of people play solo games is to actually just practice the game. Um, and a lot of people will, when they get a new game, they'll set it up and they'll play through it solo to learn the game. Uh, so that they, I mean, especially people who are um, the the person at their club or meetup or whatever that tend to be the, the host where they, they take along a game and they teach the game. Um, yeah, a lot of those people will, when they get a new game, they'll set it up, they'll play it solo because by playing the game, they get to learn it better and they and therefore they can teach it better. Um, and a sort of adjunct to that is the idea of simply playing a so a game solo to get better at it, to learn the systems better, to to explore uh, avenues of play that you maybe wouldn't do in multiplayer game games because you're um, yeah you're you're trying to win. I mean um, yeah, I, mean, I think that's you know sort of part of the the social contract when you play a multiplayer game is that you are playing to win and therefore you are not going to necessarily try um, risky strategies but if you play solo you can do that you can try whatever crazy strategy you want because nobody there is going to be annoyed by you doing that because it's just you um, oh, and that brings up, yeah, um, it, you, can, you can take as long as you want. <laughs> you, you know, it's, it's completely, um, free and open experience where you're, you're not constrained by other people. Uh, you know, there are, um, solo gamers and I, in the in the sort of solo gaming Facebook groups and forums you see uh, every so often reports of people that will set up a game and they'll play it over hours if not days and um, the enjoyment there is that you're not un, under any pressure to make your take your turn um, you can think through uh, a turn to a much uh, much more detailed level than you can when you're playing multiplayer um, because you know even I think the the worst AP players they feel that pressure of it. It's my turn, and I've got to do something, and and that's kind of a, a factor that makes AP worse. Whereas solo gaming, there's no such thing as AP. <laughs> it, it's you know, or or there is AP, but it's not a problem. Um, yeah, there isn't the AP problem when you solo game because you can take as long as you want to take your turn, and it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, there might be, you know, your family reasons or <laughs> that space needs using or, or whatever. But, you know, beyond that, it's, yeah, you're free to play the game how you want to play it. Anyway, I think I've probably rambled on for long enough about solo games. Um... The last thing I would like to say is if you're not a solo gamer, if you're the kind of person that thinks solo gaming isn't for you, I'd encourage you to give it a try and not just, you know, pick up one game and try it and go, I don't like this and um, decide that solo gaming is not for you. Um, Try other solo games, particularly if you are the type of person that will pick up a um, console controller and play 
essentially a solo game on a console or on your PC. Um, you know, try try and find a game that you already enjoy that has a solo mode. Make the time to play it. And play it. Get yourself engaged. See if you enjoy it. And it won't be for everybody. But I suspect there are a lot of people that dismiss solo games that would actually really enjoy them. So, you know, if you're one of those people that hasn't really tried solo gaming, I encourage you to try it. If it's not for you, that's fine. You know, it's not for everybody. So yeah, that was the last thing I wanted to say on this topic. So thank you for watching. Um, there's another um, topic of the week up already. Um, that one is on uh, Roland Wright's um, if you'd like to get involved in that conversation, please head over to the Scott Plays Facebook group. Link will be in the description as usual. And yeah, get involved and have your say on the topics. Um, I think it's a really, it's, yeah, I find it really interesting getting people's opinions on these, these topics and I'd love to get more, uh, response to them um, I'd really like to try and get a more of a conversation going um, anyway thank you again and I hope you'll watch uh, some of my future videos mm -hmm.